What's going on, fellas? I got another quick little test I'm gonna do here today with the bullet burner. I've done some modifications to this nozzle to see if my theory stands true as to why we were seeing some very uneven turbulence in this combustion chamber. Last time we fired it, there was no combustion taking place in this upper region. There was an eddy current that was causing some very strange turbulence and I think I may have corrected the problem and we're gonna take a look at that. All right, fellas, let's go for a little walk here. Now, the inner pin stock of this nozzle was off by like maybe two thousandths of an inch, maybe a hair more than that. And it was causing some very strange inner turbulence characteristics, which are now gone. I have perfectly aligned this nozzle, and you can see we're getting a pretty uniform combustion. However, there's still some problems inside of this combustion chamber. We see yellow flame. We've got some rotation in there, oddly. I would say about a thousand RPMs. Every once in a while, it'll really pull loose. You see that spin there, right there? Probably about a thousand RPMs or so. And there is nothing geometrically causing that to happen. It's just doing it. But uh, I don't like the way things look inside of there. We see yellow flame. Our secondary air is just not enough. That Ventura isn't pulling enough. The turn down rate on this thing is great. Can turn it down. The flame's looking a lot better than it was. I'll give it that. Um, the whole top end had no combustion taking place um, the last time we looked at this. Let's take a look at that real quick. All right, so this is the footage from the waste oil test that we did. This is some diesel oil that's contaminated. And as you can see, our flame is dumped onto the bottom of the combustion chamber here. Even with the nozzle properly aligned, geometrically that is. Now that just goes to show you what about a couple of thousands of an inch can do. And I'm talking about a human hair here, whatever that comes out to. You move that inner cap stand, a human hair out of alignment, and you get some extremely undesirable effects. You can see we just have nothing. And then this is the system with the properly aligned inner pin stock. See that flame jumps around quite a bit there. Some very strange things still going on inside of there. We definitely want to get some more secondary air. So that's going to be the next move. You can see it's just starved of air. That color is just too yellow. This is diesel. We should be pure blue. Very strange that I'm getting these vortices the way I am. I don't understand why we would get rotation if I'm not inducing it. But there is clearly quite the rotation in there. And it may have something to do with the way the air is coming out of that cap stand and down through the nozzle itself. Maybe it does have a rotation from the T, the T fitting. Perhaps, I don't know what's going on there. Very odd. So, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna shut this thing down and we are going to add some more secondary air. It's just starved for air. So we're gonna put some breather holes in the back of this thing and take another look at it. So my theory was correct. The inner pin stock was heavily influencing the inner turbulence. So just being out of alignment a couple thousandths of an inch causes a drastic change in the combustion behavior inside of this thing. I knew it. So I've increased the size of the secondary air intake. Let's see if this helps any. So. Here we are, looking beautiful, man. We've made some huge improvements here on this thing. So we've uh, manipulated the pin stock to a proper alignment, and we have increased the secondary air import or intake port. Still got a little bit of an alignment issue there, but uh, just moving the nozzle around kind of corrects that. Corrects that. So yeah, if you ever buy one of these things from me and you notice that your flame's got a little bit of a lopsidedness to it, just give the nozzle itself a little bend. See here, I'm just kind of trying to move it around until it gives it the nicest profile because seriously guys, a, a thousandth of an inch can cause some things to happen downrange quite a bit because of the arc of a minute. It, everything is at an arc, it's a rotation. So if you rotate one degree, you know, 50 feet away from you, that one degree rotation is going to give you like 25 feet of displacement. It's um, one of those scenarios. It, it's amplified by the angular moment of an arc. So 
kind of one of them deals. This flame's looking beautiful. Let's crank this thing up and see what it does with some more secondary air. This is probably uh, about 500 horsepower worth of fire there. Oh, had a little flame out. An air bubble did that, actually. We'll show you that here in a second, what an air bubble can actually do to you. It's uh, kind of a, a bad situation to find yourself in. So if you've got a small vacuum leak, a tiny air bubble gets into the system and then it grows exponentially because it's under vacuum. That bubble is really the size of a period on the piece of a paper, most likely. But because this system's under vacuum, watch what happens. Bam, flame out. So that's one of the secrets to getting these things working, guys. If you ever find your, your torch just ain't burning right, chances are you have a small air leak in the fuel line somewhere downstream and you just can't see it. And as I said, because the bubbles grow in a vacuum, you're going to have problems. This is just kind of a GoPro footage of that little incident there. I've turned the flame down significantly. This thing runs amazing at the upper end spectrum I'm telling you what dude there I don't have any burners right now that perform this well at this high of an operating rate they, they start to uh, shoot the flame off the front of the nozzle so the combustion is no longer taking place inside the combustion chamber and the slightest breeze can put a flame like that out so that's not desirable at all Okay, so there you have it, fellas. We're gonna do some more testing on some different designs. At this point, I'm, we're gonna try the 22 caliber version of the bullet burner next, which is gonna be a very small combustion chamber. We're also gonna do a 50 caliber, which will be the same size as this one, but I wanna make it like that long, just for um, waste oil, because sometimes waste oil needs a bigger combustion chamber to thoroughly heat up and burn so you don't get splatter in your heat exchange. So, there you have it, just a little quick little test on my latest product here. Um, I think I might have already sold one of these. We'll find out. This is gonna be the cheapest burner I have for sale. I'm gonna be able to sell this thing for like 80 bucks. 